Hello once again, nerds! This is The Shoutout Show. This is where if you've recently started following the channel or if you have engaged in the conversation, this is where uh, you get your acknowledgement and the c conversation continues. So we've got, uh, we're, we're making up because we didn't do a show last week, so let's not uh, waste too much time on the intro, shall we? Okay, so let's get a couple of the mandatory things out of the way. First up, there are certain videos that are on the channels. On I think there's at least one on both of the news channels uh, that are verboten, that we will not uh, do anything from the comment section just because the comment section has kind of run away at this point, or it's so far past the release of the video, whereas to make the comments in the video or to make the general sentiment of the video kind of irrelevant in the grand scheme of things, so it doesn't make sense to acknowledge uh, the, the, the comments anymore. So if you have commented on a verboten video, then I apologize. I will probably respond to you in text, but I'm not going to respond to you here on the shout out show. Uh, that being said, I will respond to just about everything uh, here on the shout out show. Unless there is a group of very similar comments, uh, in which case I will just address probably the one that I feel like is the most eloquent and uh, they just kind of have that be the blanket response to the grouping of comments. Or also in the same vein, uh, I'll, I'll highlight first comments as well. If somebody goes to a video and says, first, yeah, I'm probably going to give you a shout out just because I find that hilarious uh, that people think that it matters. And so I'm going to make it matter. Uh, uh, that being said, I think that's all of the cap. Oh no, and then also the last caveat is if you have subscribed recently to a YouTube channel and don't have your settings set to public, I cannot see that you have subscribed. Uh, so I can see the number go up and I'm very appreciative. And if you want to stay anonymous, then by all means stay anonymous. I ain't hating on you for that. Uh, I just can't give you the acknowledgement here on the show. So if you want the acknowledgement, if you want to join the conversation, the only way to do that is in the comment section, because right now we have suspended live shows because I'm trying to sort out my day job situation. Uh, I think that's all of the caveats. So let's get into the things. Uh, I still have not been able to, I, I've reached out to Rumble at this point and they have not responded. There is no way to see who is subscribing to your channel on Rumble. So uh, the only way to get acknowledgement on Rumble is to comment on videos. Uh, so the only comments we have, the only new subscribers, followers, etc., are on the YouTube channels. So that's what we're going to talk about. So on the main YouTube channel, uh, over the course of the last two weeks, because again, we did not have a show last week, uh, we have three new subscribers who have their settings set to public. Those subscribers are Albert Gerard, William Johansson, and Paul Brulo. Thank you very much, nerds, for your subscriptions over on the second second YouTube channel, the Nerd News Clips channel, which is where this is getting posted, <laughs> uh, and also on Rumble, but you know, whatever. Uh, so we have two new subscribers who have their settings set to public, and that is Rodrigo Marias and Thomas Kenny. Thank you very much, nerds, for the subscription. So that is the shout out portion. Let's get to the viewer mail, shall we? Uh, over back on the main channel, we have the reaction videos uh, is also goes to the main channel. And so the, the comments that we are addressing are from the main reaction videos, because we do the short reaction videos over on the uh, clips channel. But the first one comes from the video for the reaction of the Shadow of Intent song. Uh, the title of the video, Nerd Reacts to Shadow of Intent. And uh, the comment comes from new subscriber William Johansson. And William says... Loved hearing your insights on the production side. I agree, it's a nightmare. I saw them live, best show I've ever seen. Yet the mix was suboptimal. Regarding that, I have a question. We all know it's often hard to hear the mids when in the front row it shows, especially some parts of the guitar fret. But I noticed when I saw them, 
that Chris's guitar would oscillate back and forth as Bryce hit the kick drum. Is it possible that the kick drum was so loud that it literally drowned out the guitar? Cause like, holy shit, I got a chest massage, I tell you, at almost 300 BPM. Uh, I'm just wondering if this is a possibility, thanks. Uh, William also left a second comment after this, uh, commenting on the quality of my audio on the, uh, the reaction videos. Uh, so I'm gonna address my audio first because it's a real simple answer. OBS is open. <laughs> open broadcast software, or open, I think that's what OBS stands for. Uh, it, 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 the interaction with some of the plugins that I have is not great. I'm still working on that. I, I don't have extensive amounts of time to dedicate like I would like in order to get it perfect, so I get it close to good. <laughs> but there is, I totally acknowledge, there are definitely some bugs that I have not been able to work out that deal specifically with audio. Uh, some scenes in my OBS, the audio is incredibly spiked and there's literally no ex explanation for why that should be because all of the audio settings should be irregardless of the scene that you're on in, in because yes, there are different active audio sources, but there are not different active audio filters. So it doesn't make any sense, but yeah, I'm working through the bugs and I do apologize. I totally acknowledge that the audio on my reaction videos and subsequently the live videos, uh, because that that's also done through OBS, uh, not the greatest, <laughs> but, uh, I'm, I'm, I will get there soon. I hope, uh, as far as your first, uh, your your main comment that I read explicitly, uh, yes, this is a thing. This is the thing called ducking. I actually called out in a different reaction video, uh, I believe it was a Run the Jewels video, uh, there was an example of ducking in a professional recorded uh, song. It, it was a thing that got released to the masses and it had audio ducking. People in the comment section tried to rip me apart because, oh, you can hear something that the producer didn't hear and he gets paid millions of dollars and you're just some no-name YouTuber. Uh, no, I don't think the producer didn't hear it. That, that's a whole different, we've already had that conversation. But yes, audio ducking is a thing. Uh, it's actually, it, it's super easy to accidentally do. It's uh, also kind of, once you get so far into a mix, it sometimes can be difficult to undo. Uh, so it's why it's very important to keep all of your instruments on their own side chains uh, so that you can mix them individually and then you have a master mix as well instead of trying to bounce and ping pong and all that stuff when you're doing recording. As far as a live show goes, again, this is super, super common with kick drums, very specifically, where the compress it comes from compression. I don't think I said that yet. It comes from using compressors, uh, I would say incorrectly, but honestly, when you're talking about music and art in general, like there's no real incorrect way unless you're getting a result that you don't like or that, that it is not uh, received well by your audience. Uh, so ducking, I would say, is kind of an incorrect use of a thing, but unless that's what you're going for. Very likely not the case here. Uh, in a live situation, honestly, what was very probable, because Shadow of Intent, while they do well for themselves, I would not say they are a huge band, so there is a possibility that they were working with house audio. So the house audio guy is the one, or maybe even like they were on a tour with other bands and they were all sharing an audio guy, uh, which is probably slightly more likely than house audio. But in the either way, it's very likely they were working with somebody who was setting up very quickly and was also not super familiar with their sound. So what they ended up doing was they would compress the end result audio instead of just the drums. Uh, I've been in certain situations where you have no option other than to do that. Uh, so very possibly that's what it was. There was one compressor, it was put at the end of the chain after all of the other mixing, and it just so happens that that created ducking for the kick drum over the guitars. Uh, the 
ideal way, again, is to have everybody on their own side chain mix uh, so that you can have a compressor per mix. So you have guitars on one mix, you have drums on one mix, you have vocals on one mix, you have bass on one mix, and then you bring them together in the master and then Potentially, you could then compress even more, but that's just getting a little ridiculous at that point. Uh, have a little bit of compression on the drums, have a little bit of compression on the vocals, and that's all you really need in a live situation. Uh, I think that sufficiently answers your question. I really like the the uh, the the picture you've painted with the uh, chest massage at 300 BPM. That's awesome. <laughs> that's a great way to describe a lot of metal shows I've been to. Uh, but that's what we've got on that one. So let's move on because this needs to be a quick-ish <laughs> uh, shout out show. Uh, so next one comes from another Oh, this is also from the Shadow of Intent. Why did I do my notes all goofy? I'm a silly boy. Uh, so also from the Shadow of Intent video, uh, this one comes from Flyerboy90. Uh, Flyerboy says, Generally nerdy, you mentioned Shadow of Intent singing about the flood being much cooler in your eyes. Their second album, Reclaimer, is a Halo-related trip through paradise. Regarded as one of the best, best deathcore symphonic albums, definitely one of my favorites. Uh, as I am relatively new to the Shadow of Intent fandom. I'm going to go check this one out. Actually, I, I've already checked it out and I totally agree. It's pretty great. I still think that they have some production issues that they're working through being as they are a fairly young band. So uh, it is what it is, but they're pretty good. Let's move on over to the Clips show, or the Clips channel rather, and this is where we have the vast majority of content for today's video. Uh, so first up we have the quick reactions to Greta Van Fleet. This is quickly becoming a uh, verboten video, so I think this is very probably going to be the last time we acknowledge the Greta Van Fleet quickie reaction because everybody's saying basically the same thing and also I've kind of got my answer to the question that I asked in said video. So uh, first up we have Baseman John left a comment. Baseman John says, how many bands are not influenced by other bands? I love Greta Van Fleet. Who's doing the 70s sound these days? Uh, that's a fair... Uh, to your point, that is fair. The point that you are making. Is it uh, appropriate for the video that I posted? That's a little questionable. Um, also, I never said that Greta Van Fleet wasn't, uh, that, 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 that being influenced by a band was bad. I never implied that being influenced by a band was bad. The implication is stealing the sound of another band is what comes across as lazy and unoriginal original. <laughs> so let's let's keep our terminology clear. I also don't think Greta Van Fleet are an untalented band. I think that they uh, they found that they can mimic the sound of early Zeppelin very well and are kind of running with that. Uh, early Zeppelin didn't even stick around for that long. Zeppelin kind of evolved into something a little more uh, beefy, I feel like is a fair way to put it. And that became the sound of Zeppelin. So uh, I, there is there is some positive to Greta Van Fleet uh, in my eyes and ears as far as that goes. I just, I, I, again, the point of the video was I have never personally met anybody who was like, Woo! Greta Van Fleet! They're the greatest! Uh, I've honestly even barely known people who know who Greta Van Fleet are, <laughs> but I also run in very different musical circles than most people. So that's why I questioned at the end of that video, who likes this and why? Because I don't get it. Uh, I like Zep, uh, in spite of a couple of aspects of that band, but I still really love Zep. I just, I don't want Zep, uh, the, the beta version of 2.0. So, uh, moving along, still for the Greta Van Fleet reaction video, we have Jonathan Davis. Oh my god, Jonathan Davis from Korn? Yeah, probably not. But we have Jonathan Davis saying, Greta Van Fleet sounds like Greta Van Fleet. If you say they're a Zeppelin wannabe slash cover band, then you're still living in 2017. Sounds like you're riding the bandwagon like a lot of their critics. Y'all want them to be original, but y'all can't have an original opinion. 
Uh, I really don't care what other people's opinion about mm, any music, really. When you get down to brass tacks, it doesn't bother me. I like Limp Biscuit for crying out loud. I have signed Limp Biscuit's uh, merchandise on my set. So the fact that people don't like a thing or do like a thing really doesn't phase my opinion on something. Also, it doesn't necessarily color my opinion on something. If I don't like it for a reason, I'm going to call out the reason that I see, not that the guy next to me sees. That's ridiculous. Uh, 2017 was not that long ago, but the, the, sure. Greta Van Fleet sounds like Greta Van Fleet is somebody who is unfamiliar with their musical history. Honestly, there are very, especially in modern times, there are very few bands who have a 100% original sound. Uh, they, they, you can always see the influences, even in like super aggressive metal, which I generally listen to more than anything else, uh, you can still even see shades of influence in that kind of stuff when, when on uh, normie musical listeners just can't really get past the aggression and the growls, right? So if once you're familiar with a genre, you can see the influence. Uh, Greta Van Fleet doesn't really hide the fact that they are very Zeppelin-esque. Like, that is a thing that is openly acknowledged. I think at some point they, uh, they, <laughs> they acknowledged it and said they were tired of hearing it, so they were going to, on this record that's coming out, they were going to try and distance themselves from it. With this being the first single that they've released, I don't think they're being very successful with that distancing, but it is the first single, so... Once the record comes out, we can make a proper assessment. Uh, let's continue on. Like I said, I got to try and make this short. Uh, Ron Hastings is next. Same video. Ron Hastings says, uh, do you know many how many different genres of music there are in the world, let alone bands? There's something for everyone. What does it matter if we like them or not? I could care less what other people's likes or dislikes are. I could spend an hour telling you why I like them, but in the end, would it really matter? Is it going to change your mind? Some Somehow, I don't think so. Uh, no, I, I wasn't asking you to change my mind. I was just asking for enlightenment. I don't, I, I, I think the fact that there are many genres and many types of music is a good thing. Um, but again, I wasn't asking to, for my mind to be changed. I just needed enlightenment. Uh, next up, we have Christine Elgumati. She has left two comments because I responded to the first in text. So let's uh, read them both, and then we will continue on with the conversation. So Christine says... They have sold over 3 million records, won Grammys, and sell out arenas. You should research before you open your mouth. And then her second comment. Nerd News Clips. Well, the reason I like them is they write their own material, they're extremely talented, and they play real music. There is no auto-tune ever. All those things are rare these days. Also, watching a live show is pure joy. It's truly an experience. That tone switched very quickly, did it not? <laughs> it was very aggressive at first. Do your research, you troll! Uh, I'm fairly well uh, a a a acquainted with their sound as a general statement. I've listened to a bit of their music, and that's why I don't understand the thing. So in the comment section, plenty of people have responded and said, well, this is why I think they're great, and this is why... And so that's what her second one is. Like, I never said that they uh, didn't do those things. I was very well aware that they've sold a lot of records. I'm very well aware that they are have some sort of popularity in certain musical circles. I just needed to hear from people in those musical circles. Uh, and then the second comment kind of apes what a lot of the other people are saying is that I just like the music. I very, very, very much appreciate the fact that they don't use autotune. That dude really does have that voice. Really, really does have that voice. And that is not an easy thing to do. A lot of those notes that he just hits like it's nothing are very, very impressive. I have no qualms with their talent, the ability of them to do the thing. That is great. It's just their choice of style to do the thing in is where my issue comes. So yeah, I feel, again, I think this is the last time we're going to ad address the Greta Van Fleet situation. Uh, or the Greta Van Fleet quickie reaction. I've addressed it in other videos that people have commented on. We'll probably address those, but 
going forward, that reaction is probably verboten at this point. Uh, so continuing on, we have a video from a couple weeks ago, the gaming and tech video, uh, Halo Man Sky Cancelled. We have a comment from Bobby Hamilton III. Joseph went to Netflix to make a game, he says. Um, yes, I know, if you paid attention to the video following, because the clips videos get posted anywhere from three to seven days after the main channel video. So a lot of the news, a lot of the speculation that we talk about in the clips videos is irrelevant because it's a week old, roughly, by the time it gets posted. So... Yeah, the, the following gaming and tech video, I had already addressed it. And by the time that video went up, I had addressed it on the main channel. So this is why you should subscribe to both channels, just saying. So moving from there, uh, we have uh, another quickie reaction comment. Uh, and this is, we'll, we'll, we'll address it. <laughs> so uh, the quickie reaction is Ludovico Technique, uh, Goth kind of industrial guy, uh, posted some new stuff. The thumbnail looked interesting, so I figured I'd do a reaction, a quick reaction to it. Uh, and so the comment comes from Raz slash Rihanna Spears. And this person has commented a couple of times before on reaction videos, and we'll get to that in just a moment. R Raz says... If you wish to check out something similar to Ludovico Technique, I would recommend Aesthetic Perfection. Oh, and AP have worked with Lord of the Lost in the past. So this is somebody, and I'm pretty sure they exist for most people who do reaction videos, especially smaller channels. Uh, Raz, I'm pretty sure is subscribed, so I very much appreciate that. Uh, I. I am, I'm always down to look into new music. I'm, I'm, I very likely will look into something that Raz has recommended. I don't know if she has associations with the groups that she has recommended. Honestly, I almost think that it's been aesthetic perfection every time, regardless of which react, which reaction video she's commenting on. Uh, but I don't know that for sure. So there is a very small part of me that thinks there's a possibility that Raz is a bot. But again, I'll, I'll definitely acknowledge whatever comments are on the channel. So uh, I will probably eventually check out Aesthetic Perfection. It's not exactly on the top of my list of things to do. But I mean, she's kind of harassed me into it. Uh, to That's poor word choicing. She has definitely uh, left enough comments that I am intrigued by the idea of another band in a similar vein to a lot of the music that I've covered. So... Yeah, let's continue on, shall we? Uh, Halo Man Sky can't... Oh, really? Again, I take amazing notes, don't I? <laughs> so, this one comes from the video we talked about previously. Uh, it's from somebody who identifies themselves as Shadow of Neo. Uh, Shadow of Neo says... I thought they said it wasn't the final free update. Uh, as far as I understand, this is addressing, talking about the No Man's Sky final update. As far as I read, I, and I'm pretty sure I read the press release properly, this is the final free update. Because uh, they had to... So No Man's Sky was in a very... Uh, at the time, it was a unique situation, but anymore, it's kind of par for the course. Uh, they released two horrible, horrible, horrible reviews. All of the, the gamers who were playing the game were unhappy with the quality of the game. There was a whole bunch of bugs. There was a lot of issues. So, in order to fix the game to a point where it was playable, they released a whole bunch of free DLC, and also as a means to make up to the people who spent the money. Uh, again, they released a whole bunch of free DLC. Uh, this I, ends that. Uh, there have been, I, if I'm remembering correctly, I don't really keep super close eye on No Man's Sky, but if I remember correctly, there have been a couple of paid DLCs at this point as well. Uh, they have to make money on their product. They also eventually, because this game has been out for some years at this point, they also eventually have to move to the next product. They have to stop uh, supporting their game in order to create a new game. That is the way of the gaming industry. So for them to continue to do free updates is kind of counterintuitive as far as how a business is run. So no, it makes a lot more sense that this would be the last and not the not and not the last uh, free update. So I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I did misread that uh, press release, but I don't think so. Moving on. 
Next, we have Monster Energy thinks you are stupid. This is a short specifically just about Monster Energy because they're suing everybody because of confusing marketing because they think you're dumb, which is why I have stopped drinking Monster Energy. And before we get into the comment, I must say it's been a little bit more difficult than anticipated. I didn't realize how frequently I bought monsters and, and honestly how often they run deals that make it very enticing to buy monsters where you pay, you're effectively paying about a dollar, dollar fifty per monster, uh, whereas everybody else, if you don't get the deal, is about three dollars per can. So yeah, it's been a little bit difficult to find deals with other brands that make it acceptable and also find other brands that have enough quality and quantity of flavor uh, to really be a supplement for my monster habit. Uh, but yes, I have been very successful since that video. I have not had a single monster and I have, honestly, I think I've convinced a number of other people to not drink monster anymore as well because monster is horrible. Anyway, continuing on, uh, JC is the person who left the comment and Jay says, yeah, they're not even as abusive as Disney. Claw marks and monsters has have existed forever within Wolfman Legends. Um, oh, I mean, fair. Like, yes, it's more of a marketing situation. It's not really a storytelling situation. So not kind of uh, adjacent to the point, but still valid. Like, yeah, absolutely. Uh, the, the existence of Clawmark design has existed long before Monster was a, it was a drinking company, was an energy, energy drink company, long before they were purchased by Pepsi or wh whoever owns them these days. Uh, so yeah, fair point, but just a little bit off the mark. It, cool, okay. Moving on, this is the one that I was kind of anticipating getting a lot more blowback on uh but i didn't really and but only the comments all right whatever this is the uh barbie short where we talked about how the new barbie movie is inherently sexist uh, this, there were a number of comments in this same vein, so I'm not going to do them all individually. We're just going to talk about this one. I'll read this one in individually, and then I'll try and address things that I remember seeing in the comment section from other ones if they're not covered by this. But this one specifically comes from Clorox Cat, who seemed the most toxic of the bunch. Clorox Cat says... Oh no, male characters being shallow with no personality, being only eye candy, that's awful. We never ever see this with female characters in movies and in the media. Thank God we have such a brave man exposing this utterly awful sexism. That's not the point. The point is you don't you don't better the community. You don't further the conversation of saying, oh, it's bad when you do this to women, so I'm going to do this to men because it's only fair. That doesn't increase anybody's standard of living. That doesn't make the conversation any less toxic. That just, well, you did it, so I'm going to do it. No, let's stop doing it altogether. That's the point. The point is, if you create these empty, vacuous characters, then it creates very bad storytelling opportunities. If you stack the deck so incredibly far on one side against one gender, regardless of what gender that is, then you have created a bad story. Uh, do I think the Barbie movie is going to do well? Yeah, I think they're going to, at the very least, make their money back. Uh, do I think it's going to be uh, a stain on the on cinema history? Maybe. <laughs> there is a definite probability there. Um, do I think that it's going to be remembered six months after release? No, not at all. This will happen. Everyone's going to go, oh my God, what the hell did I just watch? And then move on with their lives because this isn't doing anything good for the conversation. If you want to create a Barbie movie that is doing something different, uh, then, then, then we'll have a conversation. You want to do a Barbie movie that is highlighting the toys because when I was a kid and Barbie has existed much longer than I've been alive, but when I was a kid, uh, Barbie and all of her friends and all of the male toy characters, whatever you want to call them, they all had 
individual personalities. They had like a little story thing on the back, if I remember correctly. I had, I had little sisters and, and they played with Barbies and I remember destroying their Barbies, but I also vaguely remember seeing the packaging for the Barbies and I'm sure, and, and in the, some of the marketing and stuff as well, they were selling these as people. You're creating a character to sell to a, a little girl was their target audience. And in order for that little girl to really immerse herself in this story that she's playing, they all had to be uh, full-ish, because again, small children, uh, full-ish characters. So like they had personalities and they had all of these things. So to just say, oh, he's a Ken, and that is the extent of his personality is not in fact going in line with the marketing or the existence of this toy line since its inception. Uh, somebody else in the comment section said something on, in, uh, along those lines of, that's how Barbie's always been. Why, why are you taking issue with the movie? Barbie's always been, uh, uh, pro female and I, I I'm, and I'm paraphrasing because I don't remember exactly, but I'm pretty sure the the implication was pro female anti male. I don't I don't think that's an accurate statement. Again, was a was a, a young boy. I was a very small boy when, when Barbies were a thing to play with, and so I don't remember explicitly. But uh, yeah, that doesn't seem to jibe with my memory. Also doesn't seem to jibe with, you know, some of the retro stuff that I've seen in this vein. Also, if you go watch the Toys That Made Us, they have a whole episode about Barbie and everything associated with the line of Barbie. And I don't think any of that stuff was in there as either. So like, there is no, that the, these things do not match. Uh, yeah. I think that's what we got for that one. I, I, I fared that I've made my, my point of view well known. Uh, let's move on. Uh, next we have a uh, suggestion video. Somebody commented on a suggestion video. Uh, Kevin Beese says on the Succession Season 4 suggestion, which I still suggest you watch it because it's really damn good. But Kevin Beese says, don't care. Um, thank you for the algorithm bump. That's as much acknowledgement as you're going to get. Let's move on. Scott Pilgrim anime short, where we talked about the uh, Netflix announcing that they're doing an anime for Scott Pilgrim that is going to feature the original uh, live action cast doing the voices for the anime. Uh, we have a couple of comments. First comes from Brian Gonzalez. Uh, Brian says, that's actually exciting. The movie was mediocre, but very funny. Oof! I, I, I think that's a little bit more critical than you intended. Mediocre? Ooh, mediocre. Uh, so we haven't really talked about this for a while on either channel yet, uh, uh, for a minute, but mediocre, I feel like, is probably kind of the worst uh, thing you can say about art because mediocre, there's nothing to learn from necessarily. Mediocre means it's sufficient and I'll forget about it as soon as I look away. Uh, whereas if it's bad, then you can point out the things that were bad and improve or, or avoid. <laughs> or if it's good, then you can see why it's good and try and uh, expand upon the good bits or uh, uh, ape the good bits in your piece if you're trying to make your own similar piece of art. But to call it mediocre, oh, that's a little bit of a, a, a little bit of a dig, I feel like. Um, but I also don't agree. I think it's the original Scott Pilgrim movie is is uh, 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 a, a piece of art. Is a great piece of art. Is so I, I'm I'm drawing a blank on the director. Uh, producer guy who's also doing the anime. He did Baby Driver. He did all of the Simon Pegg movies. Uh, and I brain fart names so easily and I apologize. But he just is, he is one of the last auteurs. He is one of the only auteurs in our generation. So like, I've, I've, I feel like maybe watch it with a more critical eye next time, but watch it again for sure because it's a really good movie. Also, you should know Scott Pilgrim is an asshole. Like, that's just, that. I feel like it took me a, a couple of watches to really catch on. Oh, the protagonist sucks, <laughs> which is an interesting thing in modern storytelling, in modern cinema to be good. Edgar Wright, there we go, Edgar Wright. Edgar Wright does fantastic things with, with movies. And I feel like Scott Pilgrim is kind of the first real good example of him stretching his legs away from Simon Pegg and Nick Frost, because that those movies were the, the, the Simon Pegg, Nick Fro Frost movies were 
kind of very similar in the direction though still great if you go watch Shaun of the dead and tell me that there is not a whole lot of cinema awesomeness in there and 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 i i, I feel like you and i will have a great discussion as to why you're wrong but <laughs> i feel like his first like really stretching who he is as an auteur happened with scott pilgrim and so yeah uh, watch it again. Be a little bit more critical with uh, the the cinematography. Be a little bit more critical with the directorial choices, and I think you'll find that it's better than you remember. Anyway, uh, there was another comment on here. It comes from Joseph Ilvento. Joseph says, "I give it a couple years, then they cancel it to give Big Mouth another season." As much as that really sucks, uh, you're probably right. At best, oof, at best, I feel like we get four seasons out of the Scott Pilgrim anime. Uh, more likely, I bet we get one, maybe two if we're lucky seasons before it gets canceled. Um, hopefully, it's not to give Big Mouth another season. I feel like Big Mouth uh, made an announcement recently that I didn't cover because I don't watch the show anymore. And I don't think it deserves news coverage. Um, but I feel like they made an announcement that they're going to be ending soon, but I could be wrong because, again, don't really keep tabs on it anymore. But, uh, yeah, I think you, there's some truth to your comment. Uh, let's move on, though, shall we? Uh, Unearth. I did a re quickie reaction to a the new Unearth uh, single at the time. They've since put out two, I believe. Uh, so on that quickie reaction video, I got a comment from the official Unearth YouTube channel. Uh, really, I just wanted to, to kind of brag a little bit because I think that's really cool. Eh, I, not that I'm special. I don't think that they were like, hey, generally nerdy, that's the guy. No, I don't think that happened. Uh, really, what most likely is they put into uh, their search, they hashtag on earth or hashtag metal or something and saw probably a series of videos doing reactions to their song and they went through and commented on a number of videos, probably a few dozen at the lowest. <laughs> uh, they probably honestly hired somebody to go through and comment on a bunch of videos and that's what happened i was one of those videos i'm not special by any means but uh the the comment from unearth official is three devil horns so i'm giving you the the only two that i got and uh, right back i really really love unearth and everyone should go check them out and i think it's great that they at least have some form of acknowledgement to the community who does the reactions and things so uh yes let's go moving on bram stoker's dracula we have a movie suggestion short uh, with comments, Derek Nez is the person who commented on this one, and Derek says, I saw this first, so it's what I think of when someone says Dracula. This and Liam Neeson. <laughs> Why Liam Neeson? <laughs> that's, that's honestly hilarious to me. Um... I, I still think Bella Lugosi. I, I honestly 100% have not seen the Bella Lugosi Dracula all the way through. I've only seen clips and pieces, but that's still I, that's still the first image in my head when somebody says Dracula. I think that you could do much worse than the uh, 90s Dracula movie. Uh, 95, I believe. Um, so yeah, that's great because everyone in this movie is is a national treasure at this point. Uh, I mean, some of them are British, but whatever. <laughs> we'll 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 adopt them. But yeah, that's. Uh, I feel like you're not alone. There's plenty of people who think of this Dracula over the Logosi Dracula. I'm just a little weird. Our a little old, whatever. <laughs> Continuing on, uh, Summer of Shoutouts, Taproot Van Fleet. We have, again, our friend Jonathan Davis. Man, corn just really stocks me. Jonathan Davis says, again, I'd bet my life that you're nowhere near the guitarist Jake Kizka is. Um, I didn't say I was as good of a guitar player as Jake Kizka. I did say that I could probably play... Uh, any Greta Van Fleet song you throw at me. Uh, given enough time, anyone who is familiar with the instrument can play just about anything. Uh, I, I have not seen... Like, you go watch... Uh, or listen, rather, go listen to uh, uh, Between the Buried and Me song. Go listen to uh, Lorna Shore song. Go listen to... Uh, 
<laughs> Necro Goblicon song. Go listen to something there. In those solos, there is legitimately stuff. Go listen to Protest the Hero, the lead guitar licks in most Protest the Hero songs. Like, eventually, sure, I stand by the statement I just made. Eventually, I could probably play them. But I would have to learn new techniques that I don't currently have in my fingers in order to do that. Uh, Greta Van Fleet, pretty sure I've got all those techniques already in my arsenal. So, yeah, I, you're really just looking for this gotcha moment that isn't coming. I'm sorry. <laughs> Continuing on, we have a Diary Suggestion. Diary by Chuck Planiak. Book Suggestion from a couple weeks ago. Ivan Avila says on this video... Diary is one of his best books. It truly is a work of art novel. Love his dark and twisted nihilism prose. Classic. Uh, yes, uh, Diary is, uh, the, what do they call it? The, the early Polaniac. You have Fight Club, Diary, Lullaby, Survivor. And I think there were five of them, and I'm, I'm drawing a blank. But it kind of, the early years of Planiac uh, come to an end with Rant, I believe, is where the, the, the line gets drawn. And then after that, they become a very, his, his writing becomes very different. Uh, and any one of those first books is, there are a lot of similarities in the, in the way the protagonist tells the story, and there's a lot of similarities in the things that happen and so on and so forth. Uh, and it's so like you can tell early Planiac versus modern Planiac. Uh, and I think Diary is probably, I still feel like I lean a little harder on Lullaby as far as like my favorites of his, but yeah, Diary is absolute, like, he's such a great writer. Such a great writer. Absolutely agree. Let's not waste time. Moving on. Uh, next, we have uh, Lil Pump, the Lil Pump reaction. Got a similar comment uh, to the, uh, what was it, the, the Ludovico Technique reaction. So, Lil Pump put out a, tried to put out a new metal song, and it was garbage, and I got a comment from somebody named Zeal. And Zeal says, you should check out a song called Bablo Boat by J. Cole, Super Smooth and Chill. That's way better music and a real rap artist who don't talk about robbing mafias, murder, drugs, and killing or hoes and cars. J. Cole is someone who speaks the truth and got me into real hip hop and real rap. I don't listen to Lil Pump or Lil whatever they got going on. <laughs> um... I, you must have found my short because of the hashtags, which this is proof, children, uh, that hashtags apparently kind of work on YouTube. S because if you don't listen to Lil Pump, why would you, unless you regularly watch the channel, in which case, thank you very much. Um, but I, don't, I just don't understand how you would have found my video if you don't listen to Lil Pump. Or watch the channel or so on and so forth. So, interesting. Uh, I, I've never heard of J. Cole, Super Smooth and Chill. I feel like J. Cole was a uh, an R&B singer back in the 90s, but I could be misremembering the name, something similar at least. Uh, so I don't know. Again, this is another person who very possibly is, uh, has some association with the artist, and uh, it, I, I don't think this is a bot, just the way it was written. Um, and this is the first time I've heard from them, so the, all things lead me to not think that. But... Um, yeah, I, 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 again, not super high on the list of priorities, but I'll eventually give it a listen, I'm sure. Uh, next up, we have another... <laughs> oh, this is actually a music news video, rather. So, music news uh, from about two weeks ago when Henry, uh, Harry Belafonte died. Uh, so, the, again, this is example. I will highlight just about any comment. <laughs> Paul Sexton. Paul Sexton came in and said on this one, uh, Motionless in Volta Belafonte Death Punch was the name of the video. <laughs> Paul Sexton says, first like and comment, I'll take it. Thank you. I will too. <laughs> Thank you very much, Paul. I appreciate the like and the comment because the algorithm, you know, kind of has a tendency to bump you up when you do that. Uh, next, we have a rumor mill video. And this, I believe, is our final address for this episode. So cool. We've come to the end. Fantastic Nicolas Cage cameo for Star Wars. Uh, again, rumor mill video from, I believe, two weeks ago. 
So the most recent rumor mill video, as I'm recording this, uh, comes from jwill1028. And Jay says, I don't think you're giving Driver his true credit as an actor. He'd be brilliant as Richards. Um, I never said that he would, he is a bad actor. I, 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 I honestly think I very explicitly said the opposite in that video, in that I think Adam Driver is a fantastic actor. I just think there are certain, uh, there are certain physical traits, certain physical aspects of the character of Reed Richards that Driver does not necessarily lend himself for. And it's, totally out of his his control that he doesn't look like most people picture Reed Richards. He doesn't look like any of the uh, art that we have of Reed Richards. That's the thing about this character is that he's been in, in, in existence, sorry, first day with the new tongue. He has been in existence for so long, like there is a very clear way that people look and there's very uh, minor deviances from that that really the fandom uh, uh, it will acknowledge, will accept, I think is probably a better way of putting that, um, just on a surface, superficial level. Will he kill it in any role he gets? Absolutely. Do I think that he would be better served, that his acting ability would be better served as the more dynamic Doctor Doom? 100%. I think Adam Driver would do nothing but chew scenery as Reed Richards. I think there would be a desire of him, again, being the amazing actor that he is, there would be a desire for him to do certain things with the character of Reed Richards that would feel out of place, whereas if he did similar things or the same things even with Doctor Doom would be more uh, appropriate, be more in character. So do I think he's able to tone down whatever those impulses are? 100%. He's a great actor. I, do, I cannot state that enough. I think Adam Driver is one of the few actors of our generation that will be, that will go on forever and will, he, Certain roles he has done will be remembered, aside from Kylo, <laughs> will be remembered for time immortal. Like, dude is amazing. Like, th again, cannot state this enough. So I think he would be better served as this great actor as Dr. Doom, because there are physical uh, elements to it that he would more line up with that are, are less of an issue. Uh, and also Dr. Doom in my eyes and in the eyes of a lot of nerds who, I don't know, a lot of people necessarily think about it like this, but uh, in my eyes at the very least, Dr. Doom is the more dynamic character. Is Reed Richards a dynamic character? Absolutely. Reed Richards is one of the most important characters in all of the Marvel Universe. Dr. Doom is even more so, all of those things. So I think give the cooler, more dynamic, more interesting character to the great actor of Adam Driver. Like that is, I, I, I don't know how else I can state that and make it more clear. That being said, nerds, like I said, that is the end of the episode. Thank you very much for everyone who joined the conversation, everyone who subscribed, uh, who is finding me on the socials. Again, you can you know see links and stuff down in the description. Uh, and I appreciate your faces, nerds. We will see you next time. Before we go, though, always, always remember that if it's generally nerdy, it's probably here, and I'm gonna shout you out.